in the quote-unquote Destiny content conspiracy, we've had a lot of smoking guns. And a lot of proof that fanboys just tend to ignore because Bungie didn't say it. And Activision didn't confirm it. And in this, I want to fucking stress, is as fucking blunt and as trustworthy as, trustworthy as a source as you can come by at this point. So, this all comes from VentureBeat. They wrote a long article on it I really recommend reading. It was a must read. It was a great read. So, under a final ruling issued on September 4, 2015 from a court-appointed arbitrator, Bungie must honor its agreements with O'Donnell that, gi that give him the right to hold a considerable share of the stock in the company. The arbitrator found that Bungie violated its contract with O'Donnell when it fired him and forced him to surrender all of his stock. In a separate but related case, O'Donnell also sued Bungie to recover unpaid wages related to overtime and other compensation. So they were trying to squeeze him out from the start. They were trying to cut him out from stock. They were trying to cut him out from all the hard work he put into the game. And guess what? Activision and Bungie didn't win that in the legal eyes. So fuck them again. So anyways, O'Donnell composed the music for Destiny for every application of the Destiny franchise. And what that means is his, he sat down and wrote... You know, he sat down in one s recording stretch of just time where he made the music from Destiny 1 to Destiny 3 with all the DLC included, the 10-year plan. And it makes sense from a creative standpoint because this way, maybe eight years from now, something happens or he dies or, you know, anything like that. The music will sound different. There will be a noticeable difference. But the music will never change if you sit there and write it down all at one time. And it, it, it makes a lot of sense. It's it's what they do on albums. You know, you don't start an album and then fucking finish it, you know, six months later. A lot of artists do an album in one stretch and it, and it has a cohesive, coherent uh, sound to it. And it works. So, the core filings say that O'Donnell believed he was preserving Bungie's creative processes, artistic integrity reputation, keeping the faith with the fans, and protecting Bungie and its intellectual property from Activision's encroachment into artistic decisions. Okay, to, to summarize that, Bungie, or Marty O'Donnell was saying Bungie was trying to be greedy and ruin Halo, or ruin, yeah, Bungie's legacy in Halo, and they were trying, Activision was just trying to ruin Bungie's name. That's what that means. And Marty O'Donnell was, fuck, fuck you, you're not doing this. And the reason what sparked this is, is their reworking of the Destiny story. So, according to O'Donnell's view, the Band of Brothers ethos that had inspired the group's earlier work was being damaged by Activision's relationship, aka the OG7 of Bungie were being damaged by Activision. Now, while, De while Destiny was planned for September 2013's release, the, the story was substantially revised in August 2013. Okay. That pushed the release date back to March 2015. O'Donnell returned to work after a vacation, but the audio team and his supervisors did not consider him to be fully engaged in his work. That means he was getting fed up with the bullshit after they fucked over the good story and gave us a shitty story, and he was upset. The release date of the game, meanwhile, was pushed back to September 2014. Bungie set in motion a process to terminate O'Donnell. They were cleaning house. That's exactly. They were looking for a reason to get rid of him, but he was on vacation, so you couldn't really get rid of him. So they got rid of the lead story writer. They got rid of the fucking lead music director. They were cleaning house. That's all that happened right there. That's a fact. <laughs> That's all they were looking for was reasons to clean house of all the people who weren't down with let's make as much money as possible. No, no, no. The, the people who were trying to make an artistic, great game story and all the other shit, they were saying, fuck no, we're not going to let this happen. And Bungie and Activision were like, all right, well, fuck you. We're going to fire you. We're going to find a reason. We're going to fucking fire your ass. And this is fact. Like, like if you put this shit together, it's fact. Anyways, Pete Parsons, chief operating officer at Bungie, asked O'Donnell to create all of the music for the entire Destiny franchise at the same time, rather than writing the themes one at a time for each of the game's installments. O'Donnell composed a, a symphonic suite of eight movements working with the legendary ex-Beatle Paul McCartney. O'Donnell recorded that music in the early 2013. Dubbed the music of Spears, the music will be used throughout the Destiny franchise. At least that's what the plan was. O'Donnell also worked with the audio team, sound design team, sound effects, and cinematics, among other things. AKE had his hand in everything that had to do with audio, basically. 
The court papers say that Activision had little enthusiasm for releasing the music Symphony of Spears as a standalone work. And this is something that a lot of people have pointed out, that Halo's music standalone is, is a beautiful and amazing, and Destiny's is a little meh compared to it. wonder why. And, and that's an interesting thing is, is O'Donnell knew, realized the fans loved the music and he was actually going to build upon that and, and make just music to listen to that was in the game. Like, that's fucking next level shit, son. And O'Donnell became increasingly frustrated that Bungie was making insufficient effort to release that album. During E3 2013 preparations, Bungie was getting ready to show the demo off at E3 and Activision was going to play the game music with a trailer. But shortly before E3, Activision took over the trailer, reworked it, and supplied its own music rather than the music Sympathy of Spears segment. Now, in conclusion, I just want to say, this is all fact, you can look it up, Game Verge article, it's fucking gripping, it's great, quote unquote call, conspiracy call what you want, but I call it fact because the, guess what, this is an OG of Bungie. If you're not going to trust an OG of Bungie, who won legally, so you take it to the court, he won, you take it opinion, he won, you take it anywhere, he's going to win. This is fact, okay, suck it up nerds. So, remember. This isn't just the smoking gun. This is the final tea bag. He's just he body bag. He put him in a body bag. Fuck Bungie. Fuck Activision. Fuck you if you don't believe facts. That's cool. But I'm making the fin the definitive edition of the cut content conspiracy right here, son. This has been Gangster Aaron Seven. Uh, leave a comment.